a little intro here. It's common in high fashion or avant-garde photo shoots to incorporate materials into the makeup looks. Not good yet at blending eyeshadow? That's okay. You can still make incredible works of art on the human body or face because there's a whole other world to makeup when you open your creativity to the more crafty material side of things. This candy cane clean look focuses on pulling together a concept with things that you can find at a local arts and crafts store. So getting right to the crafts. For the shoulder pieces, I'm starting off with a hot glue gun, some glue, and a working surface that you can either damage or can take high heat. I'm lightly coating this tray with a little bit of aquaphor, which is like a petroleum jelly so that I can easily peel off the hot glue when it's dry. It's simpler to just use wax paper for this part, but I didn't have any, so whatever. Then when the gun is warmed up, I basically just started doodling random lines everywhere in all directions. Sorry, I know it's kind of hard to see this because it's clear, but you can really do whatever shapes you want here. This piece was inspired by a hot glue neck piece from makeup artist Sherry Vegas, and I was originally going to use it as a neck piece over top of the rhinestones, but I decided later to cut it in half and use it on the shoulders instead so that I wasn't covering it all up. Anywho, before it dries, I'm sprinkling a bunch of white glitter all over the piece. If you wait too long to do this part, none of the glitter will stick, and if you do it when it's all super hot, all of the glitter will stick, so keep that in mind. When it's solid and you think it's covering a wide enough area, start carefully peeling it all off. If you notice there's spots where there's big holes in your piece missing any glue, you may want to go back and reconnect more glue to reinforce it so it doesn't rip where you don't want it to. If the size or shape doesn't work for you when we cut it in half later, you can always add more glue to this or cut off parts you don't want. It's very versatile, that's what I'm trying to say. And of course, a makeup alternative to this is to do a similar method to how I made the scales in my Toxic Mermaid tutorial where you squeeze hot gelatin out of a syringe in a similar pattern to this hot glue. But because the focus here is the material side of the makeup, I went with the hot glue pieces, and also because hot glue dries more white than gelatin, which is kind of yellow. But if your skin is sensitive, you may just want to go for the gelatin. Make similar pieces for the tops of your hands and your forehead. Forehead, forehead, forehead. For the forehead piece, I basically started with like a, like a uterus type shape. Mm-hmm, and I went from there. It's true, it looks like a uterus. You can do exact measurements if you want, but I just eyeballed it. On to the crown. I love making headdresses, so any look that I think will benefit from one, I'ma do it. Everything I use for this I got from a craft store, specifically Michael's. I start with this red wire and fold it in half to the length of about a headband, securing the loose ends together with hot glue. You could just use a headband too, it would probably be easier to work with, but I like the flexibility of this. Then I'm taking this flower, ripping it apart, and cutting off each petal. He loves me, he loves me not. Same with these sparkly leaves because we're going to use both to shape a base for the crown. So basically for this, I like to find one symmetrical item for the very center to start off with, like this here half a leaf, and then I glue out as symmetrically as I possibly can on each side from there. I went back and forth between the white petals and the red leafing, adding where I think it needed more or less color or whatever shapes, but you can change this as much as you like with whatever materials you find. I cut these little branch thingies off and started gluing them to the back of my base, and I added a squiggle of hot glue with more glitter in the very center of the base to tie it into our other hot glue pieces. I strung hot glue from each branch and glittered those as well to make this sort of creepy, sparkly looking web stuff. And lastly, I glued these little hair combs to the side of the headband base so that I can sit it on top of my head without it going anywhere. Crown done! On to the application. And before you say it, no, I'm not naked. But I am tan, and I'll tell you why. The first thing I'm doing is taking white, any kind of white, white cream makeup, aqua paint, gel liner, jumbo pencil shadow, whatever, and dabbing that into a nice fade all over my eye area. So I felt the need to be tan a little bit for this, otherwise you wouldn't even see this part on my normally pasty skin. Okay, if you use a cream-based white for this part, powder it to prevent creasing. Then taking any red product you have that is eye safe, I'm using a red aqua paint in this case. On a tiny detail brush, I'm doing a winged eyeliner as usual. Then to get the candy cane feel going, I'm using an even smaller detail brush to draw a thin line right above the first one. Don't worry if you mess it up because there's a lot of opportunity to go back and forth on this look until it's right because I'm using a white aqua paint to go in between those two lines too. You know the saying, Roman candy cane eyeliner were not built in a day. If you happen to get this clean in one shot, awesome. But if not, you can keep cleaning up your lines by going back over the red or white as needed. Aqua paints are awesome for that kind of thing. But they're not so awesome when you don't wait for them to dry before opening your eyelid and getting a smudge in the crease. But hey, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, am I right? I said fluff you to that red smudge and decided to purposely do it on the other side, making it a little more avant-garde anyway. I used a white gel liner on a really dense fluffy brush to blend out my happy accident. Feel free to skip this part if you're not a derp like me. Add white glitter around that white faded area, because why not? 
besides glitter herpes. Then for the lashes, I added these sparkly lashes that came this way, but I used a white aqua paint to color the black part of the lashes into a white base, and then once they were glued on, I painted that white base over with a red aqua paint so that they meshed better with our candy cane lid action. Make sense? If you put the red on the black, you're not gonna see it, but if you paint it white first and then you make it red, you'll see. Anyway, yeah. Then paint your lips candy cane red to match all the other red going on. Define your brows in the middle of everything because you want to look fierce. Then grab an FX adhesive. Prosade, spirit gum, you could probably get away with using latex for this too if you really wanted to. Then I'm using a very light amount on the back of my icy headpiece but relying mainly on bobby pins under my wig to hold this on from each side. For all of these next steps, you want to go light on the FX glue because even though using crafty kind of materials is common, these things are still not tested to be glued onto your skin like regular makeup products, so you want to be careful. Pay attention to your skin's reaction always and make removal as easy as possible. There isn't any reason to think that this is any more risky than something like gluing rhinestones to your face, but still a word of caution. Ignore this red stripe I'm making. I thought I'd need it, but I didn't. Anywho, then the trick to laying down this many rhinestones all over your neck is to not have to lay them down individually. These are little strips of rhinestones that I found at the craft store and I'm just laying them down diagonally in a candy cane sort of pattern where there's a thicker red stripe and then two thin red stripes on each side separated by white. Or you see what I mean, I think. Just study a candy cane and then eat it. These have a light adhesive on the backs of them already, and since I knew I'd only be wearing this long enough for a short photo shoot, I didn't add SFX adhesive to the backs of most of these, but if you're going to wear it for any more than 30 minutes, I'd say definitely use some prosade on the backs and let them get tacky before applying it. When you've reached your shoulders on both sides, cut your big icy chest piece in half however you want and use a small amount of prosade again to stick them down. Glue on your hand pieces, put on your crown, and now you are a candy cane queen! Slay thy enemies with sweetness. <laughs> Slay. <laughs> Guys, there's something I have to tell you. I've recently become a mom to this. This is our newest zombie, and we love her. Why is so cute though? <laughs> Everybody, this is Ripley.